folks, Jen or Griffin here, and tonight, this is a long overdue look at the Zenesis Standard and Mini from HouseOfHybrids.com, and thank you to Mike for all his uh, support. <laughs> um, I've had this one since before Bait Bash, the Standard, uh, Mike delivered my Mini to me when he was here in DC, and we had a nice dinner and talked about it, and it took me so long because uh, it took me a long time to get them to work for me and I knew that it was me and something I was doing because I was seeing them work for other people um, and I just knew that I wasn't getting it like people have with the GG UFS so I wanted to give them a very fair shake and get them working to what I thought was their optimal potential for me before I actually took a deep dive and look at them all I also just got my new tank back for the standard uh, that was my fault I didn't realize it was quartz glass and I washed the Zenesis and I left it out on the kitchen counter to dry and the kitties decided the tank was a nice toy and it crashed onto the tile floor and broken a million little glassy pieces so luckily he sells spares but anyway House of Hybrids the Zenesis a Genesis style uh, rebuildable uh, let's take a look at the two bodies of the two different sizes and then we'll build a wicking coil. Let's go. So this is my close-up of the House of Hybrids uh, Genesis. This is my Genesis Standard. Nicely etched. Fits any mouthpiece. And this is the little mini that runs on an 18500. The other one, Standard, runs on an 18650. It also has a little bigger tank. They have wonderful machining little bottom switches here. I'm not a bottom switch fan, but I can actually fire this fairly easy. You can also undo that screw and there's three little magnets in there. You can adjust them or, you know, flip one around the other way and uh, adjust the tension or the force that the magnet requires to fire the switch. So Mike actually helped me make that a little easier. And we'll stick in 18350 in here. And wonderful solid steel machining, smooth as silk on the threads. Um, I do wish it had a locking off. It doesn't. Um, but standing it up on the button will not make it fire. It is all pieced in one use it, unit. The positive connection is coming out through the tank. It will fit any mouthpiece, uh, any usual drip tip that you have on that top cap. And the top cap is held on by O-rings fairly well. I mean, this isn't like some of the, like my Zenus Scuba Gen, it just pops off. Um, this one holds it fairly steady and keeps it from leaking. And there's the uh, wick going down into the tank with the coil wrapped around it, the ground and the positive connection up the center. And then that O-ring on the top there, you actually have to take that O-ring off in order to get the tank off, um, which actually makes it nice. It means you can't with your fingers slide that tank up and off or up enough that it will leak. It will only go to that second O-ring that holds the cap on and then stop. Um, which isn't enough to let the juice out the bottom, thankfully. So, I mean, the only drawback is that air hole. Uh, if you leave it laying on its side, it's possible that liquid will go up the wick and dribble out the hole. I've had that, so I generally keep them upright. I mean, if you're using it, you can lay it down for a minute, but if you leave it laying on its side, it will likely leak, especially if yours is wicking well. So let's see how my little coil is doing here. Lots and lots of vapor. And wonderful flavor, because there's really nothing contaminating it at all. That's my little mini. And this is the standard. And I just got a new tank for this. My kitties broke it, because they are quartz tanks. So this will basically take your cinnamon juice and not squeal. Um, same button. Same kind of threads, same kind of body, same kind of craftsmanship. It's really a well-designed unit. Again, take the mouthpiece off and it pretty much has the same top cap. Why would that come off? Probably because I juice up my fingers. Same exact top cap. Um, same design for where the coil goes. This one is just empty. Now again, the tank is, uh, that one o-ring is there, so I can't get the tank off. Let me pull that o-ring out, which is easy enough. 
and that one's a little that o-ring is a little bigger than the one below it so now I can slide the tank off now they are again glass tanks fuse quartz um, so if you do what I did and clean it and leave it on your counter and the cats try to play with it and knock it off it will break into little pieces on your floor um, but they are nice and you can order spares as I did there's a serial number for each model etched onto that positive column and it slides on and off pretty easily. And then you want to get it below. Sometimes to do that you use the top cap to just push it down. And then you just put the o-ring back on. Tanks back on, you're good to go. So it is fairly easy to break it all down even while there's still a coil on it and you know clean your tank out. But usually actually it changes juice flavors pretty easily as long as you have that tank mostly empty or just suck it up with a syringe. and you fill it with juice through a little, the other extra hole on top and we'll do that later but let's go ahead and uh, set it up to work it comes with uh, wire to make the coil it comes with the two sizes of allen wrenches that you need to tighten the positive and the ground connection it comes with a syringe to fill it with um, and you fill it through that little hole. That's really the only drawback, but it's not a huge pain in the butt because the tanks are big enough that you don't have to worry about bringing a syringe with you during the day to refill it. They come with pre-seasoned, pre-cut coils in both uh, 325 and 400, which I think is squares per inch or whatever, um, for a higher viscosity juice. Uh, the lower number is a little better, I believe. Um, I've been using 325. Now this for me is going to get a little messy because you, as they come, they aren't tight enough to fit. That's what she said um, in the little hole where it needs to go down into the tank. So you need to roll it between your fingers to compress it until you can get it down or, or rolled up tight enough to be thin enough to go through into the tank. Now, this was going okay, but it was like it, the coil seemed to be getting dried out and a little funky, so I dipped it in some VG and then started rolling it some more. And wait till you see what my hands look like in a second, because it's pre seasoned, which basically means it's pre charred. So I got lots of char on my hand and under my fingers. The things I do for you people rolling, rolling, rolling. See my nice, dirty VG charred hands. When you get it tight enough, you pull it through the tank. You do not want it to touch the bottom of the tank. So you don't want that metal stainless steel wick to touch the metal on the bottom of the mod. Or you will short it out. You also don't want it to be folded in so that it touches the center post. So basically you want it just like that, almost to the bottom, but not quite. Now we're going to take like couple inch bit of wire and I'm going to wrap it around that bottom little allen wrench nut which is the ground connection. I'm going to wrap it around so it sticks off both sides and of course I wasn't smart here to hold the mod where you could actually oh, see what I'm doing. I'm holding both ends of it and it's wrapped around there and then I'm tightening it down. And then you can just wiggle that one end and it'll snap off. Now you want to take the other end and start to turn the Zenesis while you're wrapping the coil around the wick. You don't want it to be tight. I know when some of us are using the silica wick rebuildables, you got to wrap the wire tight around the wick. Here you don't. You really want it to be around the wick, but touching the wick as little as possible. So you're just going to make it in little gentle curves that wrap around. So you almost have to bend the wire a little bit yourself as it goes around. And then I find it rotating it helps a little bit, but sometimes you just got to get your fingers in there and give it a little hand. I do four. I find that five is too harsh for me. I'm usually an LR vapor, so um, I don't really want a lot of power out of it. I don't like harsh throat hit, so um, mine came with five on it, I think, originally, and I found that four is better. And when you get like how many wraps you want, um, you pull it around underneath that screw for the positive connection and then you use the allen wrench for that and tighten it down. You can do the same thing. You can twist that wire until it breaks off. 
which doesn't seem to be working for me, so I will just, you know, oh, came loose. All right, let's wrap it again. Come here. Big hands, blind old eyes. Get your little butt under there. And again, you don't want that wick touching the top on that positive connection. So it's good for it to bend a little in, but you don't want it touching the metal. Now I can see that some of these loops are a little too close together. So you just take something, preferably that's not sharp, that will break some of your seasoning or char off the stainless steel. Um, and you just want to separate them out a little bit. Like these two in the middle here are a little too close. So, you know, scoot one down a little bit. There we go. Scoot the other one up. Kind of even them out a little bit. Get that one a little up higher. Check on the back side. All right. Now I put a towel down because I'm going to put some liquid on here that will probably a, either ignite or drip off. And let's check it out. Okay, that ignited it, and I'm still firing a little hotter in some places than others. Let's check it again. Now, when you first make a coil, it's going to be a little harsh. It's got to break in. This, what I'm doing here, sort of breaks it in. You want to get burnt up gunk juice on the wick so that it kind of makes a barrier between the wick and the coil so the coil burns hot. Now it's burning a little brighter in the middle than on the two ends, so it might be short in there. So let me just fiddle with those. Separate that where it might be touching out a little bit, and then we'll try it again. So basically the more ju juice you burn through it and burn onto that wick the, and the coil, the better it will go. Now it's pretty even and it doesn't look like it's shorting anywhere. They're all lighting up pretty even. That's a perfect coil. Yep. That's good. One more time, and again, the more often you can do this, the faster it will break in. Smokestack. And it's still burning pretty even. No shorts. All right. Let's wipe that up a little bit. Any mess off the edges, and let's go ahead and put it together. Fill her up. Let her rip. I'm going to trim the top off here just a little bit. Now, if you use a high VG juice, some people say that it wicks better if you leave it a little longer. Um, so, I'm going to give that a try. Slip the tank on. Once you have the tank on, put that second O-ring that holds the cap on, on. And then you're going to take your juice syringe, pop it in the tank, fill it up. Now, Mike himself says not to fill it all the way, especially on a new wick, because for some reason, if there's more air in there, it wicks a little better, so I don't fill it all the way. Now, this is more about burning that coil in a little bit, is if you flip it so that it's pointing downwards, and you do it over a paper towel or something, if you see the end of the wick getting wet while you're doing this, that means it's wicking. You know, the juice is then coming up from the tank through the wick and smoking off. And sometimes I'll let it drip a couple of drops onto the paper. And when it does that, that usually means it's pretty much ready to start using. There we go. There's a whole nice drip. If you leave it tilted this way, it should start dripping. There we go. Nice drip. Okay, wipe it extra off around the edge of the o-rings there. Now I put the top on. I'm 
So that's my deep dive on the Genesis. I have tried three other kinds of uh, stainless steel mesh rebuildables, and I have to say immediately that this is the best design. I've had a hybrid mini that didn't work very well, I've had the scuba gen, I've had a Genesis LV, I've tried a bunch of other ones, I've tried putting stainless steel wicks in ODs and i and uh, a bunch of other rebuildables. The advantage now. Sometimes I find the other rebuildables with the silica wicks just easier to make a coil and get it up and working. Um, these take a little more time because you've got to get that wick in the coil and you got to let it burned in. And on most of the other models, for a long, long time, all I tasted was the steel. Like, the difference between frozen or fresh vegetables and carrots in a can. It's like you can taste the can. Um, these don't do that for me. I don't know if it's because I'm using the coil, the, the wick, um, the stainless steel pre-seasoned that came with them or I get from Mike um, or something else but the flavor on these is wonderful as good as all of the other rebuildables. Um, flavor is great. Now when I first started using them there was that harsh, harsh and I don't like throw hit. I don't like a lot of throw hit. They were killing me. Um, the first change we made with Mike's advice at Vape Bash was we took it from the five coils wraps around the wick that it came with down to four. Um, that made it a little better. But what made it perfect for me, um, I, I just found like happenstance. Now all the caps, well the caps that come with it anyway, there are other caps, have that air hole in there. And that's sort of where your draw comes from. And I had read, because I was reading all people's comments and tips and facts before I got mine and before I tried to use it first. And most of the instructions said to rotate that. So here's the coil closest to me. And they sort of said to try to get that air hole down as far away from the coil as possible. Those people must like throw hit. Because then I saw that similar comment again saying for the best throat hit, put that hole as far away from the coil as you can get it. And I'm like, but I don't like throat hit. So I picked up my mini, I turned it around, and I put that little hair hole right next to the coil. Magic. Smooth, not too much throat hit, not harsh. The flavor's perfect. There's a lot of vapor. The other advantage that these have over the wick coils, which I usually prefer, except for with the Zenesis. Um, the coil lasts for weeks, like weeks, weeks and weeks, and the wick, months. Um, you know, e even if this coil goes bad or you break it or whatever, just wrap another coil around that same existing wick or rinse the wick off and put it back in. Um, they're pretty much nigh on indestructible. Now, um, it, it may short out. Sometimes you can just leave it and ignore it and vape it anyway. And after a time of vaping, gunk will build up on the stainless steel mesh and it'll stop shorting out. Um, so there's a learning curve. Um, these have less learning curve than any other Zenesis rebuildable I have seen. They are sturdier, solid, and better designed than any of the other Genesis style mods or uh, even separate addies I've seen. Um, it's all designed to be one piece. Mike designed it to be as solid and secure and as easy to use as possible for this kind of atomizer. Um, he has lots of videos up on how to do it, how to rebuild the coil, how to put the wick in it, what to worry about, what not to worry about, um, and they are great. This is just a beautiful simple design. The tank is built right in. Um, it all holds together. Now I know a lot of people don't like the fact that, you know, that top cap's only held on by that O-ring. So yeah, if you push it really hard, um, it will come off. But you really have to push it kind of hard. I mean, it's not just, it won't just bump and come off. So, and the little mini is, you know, great for taking around. Um, again, the only drawback is you can't leave it laying down or
last adjustment. Um, you can't vape it like you vape a regular e -cig. You can't do hard, fast drags, <coughs> especially when you first put a new coil on. You kind of got to do long and slow. But you can chain do that for quite a while. It's something about um, how the air pulls over the coil and it distributes um, the vapor a little better. It makes a little more vapor that way. Now this is that coil that I built in the video. Um, the little one that I was just vaping has 60 VG, 40 PG. This is um, 70 PG, 30 VG. So it's a little thinner juice. And that coil is still a little new, so it's still a little harsh, um, but that, but not bad. It's still vaporable, even for me, who's a, a harsh whip. Um, but as I get the rest of that tank down, that will calm down a little bit. Um, these are my favorite. People are always asking me to review all the Genesises, and I have another DID and some other stuff on order, and I have the Genesis LV and the Scuba Gen and. These are the only ones that I've gotten to work for me, and I've gotten them to work for me perfectly. And Mike is a great support group. There's a great support group of Zenfandels on the ECF. They're a little expensive. Um, they're a couple hundred bucks. But uh, the workmanship is great. The support is great. And how easy it is to use for that style of atomizer in a built-in mod is great. Um, the way you can build the coil and adjust the number of coils around it and what the resistance is, you don't need variable voltage with them. Um, so, uh, this is like the gold standard for stainless steel mesh um, wicks and functions. And you know, those little old hybrid minis from Croatia, I paid $400 for mine off the ECF and never quite got it working right. And you know, this is half that price. Now, he doesn't always have them in stock because he makes them in short runs. Um, what you do is you message him or you go to the House of Hybrids website and you get on the waiting list. It's not that difficult. I have two. I paid for them. They weren't given to me. I got on a waiting list like everyone else um, and got them in so it doesn't take forever. He now also has the exact same mechanism um, but designed not to be a solid mod but it's just a there's a universal one that will fit on any mod with just a 510 connection. There's one specifically designed for the Provary, so it fits in with the sleekness of the bottom of the Provary. And there's one specifically designed for the, it's called the g -Addy, designed for the GGTS. Um, he had one of those with him when he was here. It, it looks great on the GG, and then, you know, everything on top works the same. Um, those are not as expensive as the whole mod unit, but the functionality and how it performs is, and how you make the wick and the coil is exactly the same. So, but anyway. These are my favorite uh, of the Genesis style stainless steel mesh. I'm not going to bother trying to put a stainless steel mesh in any of my other rebuildables. I'll just stick with them in the old uh, silica wick that come with. But when it comes down to rebuildables, and I've tried everything from an at Olmizer to the uh, Phoenix, my favorites are the Penelope and the Genesis. Are they expensive? Yeah. Can you live with one of the other ones? Probably. But. It's still my favorite. Your miles may vary though, and they are fiddly, so I mean, don't expect to get one of these and have it work perfectly. It took me months to figure it out, but when I finally did, the result is kind of awesome.